and so welcome here today. And as you know, probably know already, is that we are still under lockdown. And uh, until further notice, we are going to stream every Sunday morning live broadcast here from MConnect. So don't miss out. Tell your friends, tell our members you guys know of, and remind them that every morning, every Sunday morning on 9 o'clock, we will be live streaming. We're going to worship God and... And this morning's theme is all about mercy. So I want you guys just to, there we are, if you are sitting or you're in front of your television, let's stand up and we're going to open with a prayer and we're going to sing two songs and trust that God will touch you there. Father, thank you that we can come together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are in a, a place that we can still worship you in our country, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we can live stream from here and reach so many people's hearts today and father god i pray that everyone that is tuned in this morning that they will feel your presence there in their houses in their homes they will experience you father god from out of a new perspective in jesus name we ask father god Oko tula homo sawako, oko tula homo sawako. Oh mercy is crying, falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy it falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all over me. Oh mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy it falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all. Over and hey yo, I receive your mercy. Hey yo, I receive your grace. Hey yo, I will dance forevermore. And hey yo, I receive your mercy. Hey yo, I receive your grace. Hey yo, I will dance forevermore. Mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all over me. And mercy is falling, is falling, is falling. Mercy falls like a sweet spring rain. Mercy is falling, is falling all over me. Oh, hey, yo, I receive your mercy.
defeat set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. An ending love, amazing grace. An ending love. Unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you again once more here in M Connect and may the blessing of God be upon you in this new year and i'm looking forward to serve with you as the lord is leading us in this new year as today we speak on mercy says no this word mercy and grace are so closely related and sometimes we we use grace instance of mercy's place as we try to explain or define what is happening in our midst and grace as is defined is caters goodwill that's what grace is it's not asked nor deserved but is freely given and that's what god did to us he gave us christ there was no point where we can stand and claim and say, give us Christ so that he can die for our sins. But that's what God did for us. He just gave us by grace, his son, Jesus Christ. And mercy is compassion and kindness shown to someone whom is not one's power to punish. It is somebody who's got the right and the power to determine and decide what has to be done or what decision has to be taken out of this. And others say mercy is an act of relieving someone from their suffering. And this brings this thing today to me and say, I think this is what we need as a church. This is what we need as a nation. We need God's mercy upon us as a country. We need God's mercy upon us where God can show his compassion upon us and his kindness. Since he's the one who's having power, who is in authority, we say we serve the omnipresent God. And he's God who knows the end at the beginning. And therefore, he is an almighty fool, all-powerful, all-knowing God. That's who he is. And therefore, is God who can bring to us an act of relieving any form of suffering that we go through in our lives. We all acquired certain patterns in life as we move on in our lives and that they form the basis of our daily activities. Through the patterns that we follow, we are prone to follow that on almost every day. That is what we would do as human beings. But then what happens when our daily routines is disrupted? What happens when there's a form of disruption that comes up? And after spending a year last year 2020 embracing this thing that is called the COVID-19 it brought a lot of uncertainty in us and now the question is how do we start going forward in 2021 well knowing that we are at that place which we is called now we are at a moment of second wave in terms of the virus in the country and all over the world but I believe that 2021 is a perfect time for us as it is in the beginning in the year that we reset our minds in terms of the patterns that I spoke of 
look closely at our habits and prepare our hearts also for what I believe God is able to do. As we said, he's an almighty full God. What God can do to us in this year going forth. And I urge you that you, 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 you try and find a pattern, a new one. As we renew our mind in doing things. That we find a pattern of, of spending time with the Lord. That doesn't just happen. One has to commit into spending time with the Lord. And secondly, focusing on Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. I can assure you, once you focus on Christ, we get better daily. We become better people in all spheres of our life. And the third one is remembering who you are. I said previously, if there's something that our enemy, the accuser of the believers, that will always do is to take us away from a point of remembering who we are, where we come from, and where we are with the Lord in our lives in this time. And the last one, do not despise the small beginnings. It is in those small things that happens or we do that we see the hand of, of God at work in our lives. And therefore this morning as we say, mercy says no about us. And our focus today is in the book of Psalms. And this is the book that is mostly so difficult. In fact, to preach about everybody knows the book of, of Psalms. Everybody use it put tattoos or we stick it on the our coffee marks we hang it on our walls wherever we are and interesting it is not only believers who love book of psalms and especially psalm 23 even non-believers they love psalm 23 so how do we begin to 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 preach on psalm 23 while it is so widely known and loved by the believers and non-believers at the same time. But there's this thing as we begin that I want you to remember. Is that you cannot outrun grace of God because grace runs faster than us. That grace that God has given us. It runs faster than us. And now Psalm 23, it's one of those Psalms that shows relentless love or grace of God that hunts us down as sinners. And that's who we were before we came to Christ. We were sinners, lost, without hope, and without any future in us. And this is a psalm about broken people, sinful people who worship a living God. It's about amazing grace that God, that chases us all the time. That's what Psalm 23 is all about. It reminds us that the Lord is undefeated by our most sins that we have committed they couldn't defeat the love of god to catch us and therefore his grace and mercies are shown so much in this book of psalm 23. somebody when he describes a sheep says that um, sheep needs constant watching as david in this psalm he speaks about the shepherd and sheep and this person says that the sheep need constant watching as they stick their every hungry snout in the grass. Be it in perfect places or in places where they can injure themselves. They go on and on trying to find what to eat. And they wander without thought about the downland. Eating and defecating and straying up dangerous hillsides. That's what sheep do. They move all over the place. 
even when they are about to drown, they can't even realize that they are in that kind of space. And even when they are slaughtered, they can't even peek because they are always so silent, even in the midst of a knife before them. And shepherding is not an easy job to do. As David brings again the picture of a shepherd before us. It's not an easy job. And it's one of the hardest jobs to do. For one is always dusty. Or find himself in such an environment. That is dusty. That it's uh, a lot of mud on it. Smelly. Constant labor. You work always when you are looking after the sheep. And if me and you we say today we are the sheep, it means we say we are lost without a shepherd. If this morning we say we are the sheep, we say that we can't do without a shepherd. And we say that we are stinky, we are dirty and messy. We need somebody who can take care of us. We need somebody who can tender us. So for like sheep, we were lost without a shepherd. And so understand this. Every time when you begin to sing that the Lord is my shepherd, you need to understand that there's a sheep. There must be a shepherd before you. The moment you sing and say, the Lord is my shepherd. It is at that moment that we are saying that I am or we are so disparate. We need outside help. I am disparate. I need some form of rescue. Disparate for care. I'm disparate for guidance. Disparate for protection. Disparate for correction. That's who I am if I'm a sheep. And I'm disparate for nourishment. And as we read from the book of Psalms 23, verse 6 from King James Version. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, when you look at, some, at verse 1 as you come down with it. David tells us, shows us. Who is God? What he did for him. But I love when you get to this last verse. In verse 6. It, it is almost like a, it sums up. Or it's a foundation of the whole Psalm 23. As you read it. For it brings forth the favor of God. The faithfulness that God has shown. Forgiveness that God has brought for us. And the fatherhood that God is for us and the forgiveness of our shepherd who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And now favor of our Lord follows us surely. We cannot deny that, that there is this favor that hunts us down all the time. And this word surely means that without a doubt there is Confidence, the, this exclamation of the word of confidence, it brought it that this confidence that we speak of, as we say, surely, goodness, it's not a self-confidence, but this one is Christ's confidence. It is the confidence that has been brought to us by what Christ did and stood for. So therefore, it means Christ's confidence. It is our testimony of what he did as we read the book of Hebrews 3, 6. As it says, that, But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we are hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the hand, holding fastly unto this hope, that has been brought to us. Not just holding it for a moment. But holding fastly. Up to the end. 
And now Christ lives in us. So we can remain courageous and hopeful to, to that end that the author speaks of. That we don't just hold in this hope or have this confidence. For we know Christ lives in us. But we hold on up until to the end. For our faith is established and strengthened in having hope in Christ Lord Jesus. And we have this assurance of what David spoke about in Psalm 23. As he brings forth a picture of a sheep and a shepherd. We take courage from what David experienced in his time. And surely goodness will follow me. The faithfulness of our Lord will never fail us all the time. For mercy says no about my life. When you look, take stock and check things that could have happened in our life. Be it in 2020. Be still here in these days that we are in, in a new year. But the grace and the love and the mercies that are ending of God are with us all the time. And goodness and mercy, I can assure you, those are the attributes of God. And now our accuser, the devil, cannot have this. He cannot be matched with having this such awesome attributes, which is goodness and mercy that God has for us. For pride has been a problem for our enemy from the beginning. And therefore we know we have this assurance that from the beginning God has set forth that we are his children and we belong to him. And when you read Hebrews 4 from 14 to 16, it says that seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now listen to this. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Oh, brethren, I wish you understand this. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now verse 6. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain what? Mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly. Let us come with confidence. Let us come as we are to the throne of grace of God. For our God is still on his mercy train. For our sins. He still sits on his mercy throne for us. So we may obtain this grace and mercy that is found in Christ Jesus. And he find grace to help in time of need. In time of need, we have seen our Lord coming true to us. And we have seen his mercy as if he's shouting loud and saying, Mercy say no about me. Mercy say no about you. We thank God that we can have this high priest by the name of Jesus Christ, who is higher than any priest. In the Old Testament, we know how, what the priest did. They would go once into the Holy of Holies for sacrificial atonements that will be done for the sins of the nation. But now God has given us such an awesome priest that doesn't need to go once into the Holy of Holies. For my Bible says he's seated on the right hand side of the Father God. And he's meditating for me and you. And his name is Jesus. He assures us of God's goodness and forgiveness. He intercedes for us. For he's having authority over all for the Father has given him, he's got authority, not like an earthly priest, but he is Jesus, the living son of God. And that's why we say, mercy say no about my life. He's always available. Doesn't have to come once in a year. But Jesus 
is here today. He is here as I speak. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, He is able to connect us with our God. Every temptation or challenges we face today are not new, as the word says. They have been in His time, and they will be always. We ought to approach the throne of grace and mercy with respect and just with confidence for our Lord to restore us back to our God for mercy has said no about my life and forgiveness of all faults is our assurance that Christ brings to us he forgives all our faults and give us this assurance that we are indeed God's children and today I know most of us went through a lot of trauma one way or the other but I want you to take a moment and pause and, and, and have a thought of why are you still around? Why are you having all those things that you still have and while others don't have? It should be one thing only. God's grace and mercy that sustains you. Because of mercy, God came, came down through his son, Jesus Christ. He came to a repentant world of sinners that needs his grace and confidence. And that happened in a form of God bringing Christ to us by granting us his forgiveness and his peace. And I want to quote to four of these things that are brought by mercy of God in us. As it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness leads to repentance. But mercy leads to new life. Mercy leads to regeneration. Goodness convicts us of our sins. But mercy offers us new life in Christ. How wonderful it is that we can stand knowing very well that being convicted of our sins, we can get new life through Christ. And goodness caused the prodigal son to come back home and say that I gotta go back home for there is plenty in my father's house. So goodness caused the prodigal son to come back home. But what? look at what mercy did. Mercy caused the son to run to meet the father. As the son approaches from far, the Bible says his father could see him from far. It could be only one thing, mercy and mercy, that draw the son and the father. This love that they had before, it's like it received new life. As he looks at him coming from a distance, it attracted him. They ran to each other and embraced each other and say, welcome back, my son, into your home. And we will celebrate your life. And this is what the mercy of God does to us. It brings new life into us. And goodness is God's hand. And mercy is God's heart. The heart of God has been for us. And therefore, we can with joy and say, indeed, mercy said no about my life. And the fatherhood of the Lord shows us something every time. Fatherhood of the Lord shows us God indeed, he dwells in the midst of his children. And the psalmist says, therefore, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I choose to be where God is. There are so many places that I could find myself in. But I choose to be where the Lord is. For the son knows when he is with the father, he is indeed protected. He is indeed in the hands that will take care of him like a sheep being taken care 
by a shepherd. Exodus 3 verse 7 in Amplified says that, The Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction. I have seen the suffering, the desolation of my people who are in Egypt. And have heard their cry because of their taskmasters or their oppressors. For I know their pain and suffering. Now I love verse 8 of it. I put it here in NLT version. It says, so I have come to rescue you. I have come to rescue them. I have come to save them. I have come to take them to a place where they belong. Hey, we serve a living God, not just a living God, but God who's able to hear us. Oh, oh what a wonderful thing. Our cries, God is able to hear our cries. That's why I always say, when God moves, he removes. He doesn't just move, but every movement that God takes, he removes. He is alive and active beyond any situation or circumstances. I believe he sees what Corona is doing. Right in this time, he, I believe God is still in charge, even in the midst of our fears and worries. And he said, Call unto me in time of need, and I will come. I heard of many miraculous testimonies during this time, and some of the recoveries that are of awesome testimonies that one can hear. But we don't get to hear of these things in the news, for they don't sell. But brothers and sisters, it's not about what you can hear on the news. It's about the grace and the mercy of God that you come to encounter on almost every day of our lives. After Christ of us, as we cry before him, after each and every cry that we have, we can surely be confident that, as verse 8 says, that I have come to rescue, that indeed our Lord is with us. And I want to conclude in this part when David says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. It is forever in eternity, forever unending, all the days of my life, be it spring day or summer days, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Winter time, summer time, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Weak days or weak days or moments. Now don't confuse this word. There's weak in terms of days and there's weak in terms of your condition of your body. Weak, W, which has got double E and weak, that has got E and A. So in the moment of the whole week, I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. In the moment that in that week, I am weak or I'm ill or I'm sick, I will still dwell in the presence of the Lord. Come rainy days, come sunshine, I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. And right now, maybe it's correct to say, even in the moment of pandemic, I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. For I have seen his mercy upon my life, coming and protecting and rescuing me from all every fear. For God Almighty will be with us all our days of our life. And David says, I will dwell in his house forever and evermore. And I, I appeal to you today, that mercy is freely given to us. That forgiveness of sin is given freely to us. There's nothing worthy that we have or having done anything better than the other person. It is just the grace and the love of God. His mercies has surrounded us. He has immersed us with his love that I can breathe and stand today and proclaim his goodness. And I urge you today that go before the throne of God and say, Father, I thank you for who you are in my life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and kindness in our life. 
are more than convinced of an ending love that we have for us. That love, Lord, that uh, relentlessly seeking us, hunting us, and reminding us of your love and favor. We have lost, Lord, so many friends, so many family members. And we always ask ourselves a question, Lord, what is it that is so special about us that we are still standing? Nothing, God, nothing that we have that we can show that we can be of confidence and say it's because of this and that. But it's only through your mercy that says no for us, Lord. We thank you and we give honor and glory to your name today, Father God. And I speak blessings upon your people, Lord, as they go throughout all over the, the country, wherever they find themselves, all over the world, those who are listening to this, Lord, that may they know that your love is unending for us. Whether it's a pandemic or any form of storms that comes off on our lives, we shall stand in the confidence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, Father, we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide in us and now forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.